Hey, good morning. This is Frank Taylor coming to you with Nature in Your Backyard this morning. Today, I'm in my backyard again. I am in a little stand I have near my driveway of pine trees. And today, I'm going to show you an organism called a spittle bug. And I'll show you how you can find them, how you can see them, and we'll talk about the interesting biology natural history of this interesting little organism called a spittle bug. Sometimes it's called a, a frog hopper because the adults look like little frogs and hop around and they're very closely related to leaf hoppers that you can find in, in your lawn. If you just take your foot and brush it across the surface of the grass in midsummer, you'll see these little bugs hopping away and they're called leaf hoppers. So leaf hoppers and frog hoppers closely related. So what am I looking at right now? Well, a good place to start to find spittle bugs is in pine trees. And I've got two kinds of pine trees here behind me. Some of them I planted, which were white pines. And the white pines have long, thin needles. And the characteristic of the white pine is that white pines have five needles in a bundle. So if you go up to a pine tree and look very closely at the needles on the tree, you can see that they come in bundles. And I'm gonna pick off a bundle. And in this bundle that comes off in one piece on the tree, and you can see that there are five needles in this bundle. So this is a white pine tree. Over here, I have a Virginia pine. And the Virginia pine tree is characterized, if you pull a bundle of needles off, by having two needles in the bundle. And also, the needles on this are, are shorter than the white pines, and they're twisted. Do you see how they, they, they're, they're twisted? They're not just sticking out flat. They twist around in that bundle. So that's a Virginia pine. So why am I looking at pine trees? Because pine trees are a good place to find spittlebug. Spittlebugs are sometimes on pine trees, but also on a lot of other vegetation. So if you go to a edge of your property, along a fence line, where there might be some tall weeds that haven't been mowed or a field, you can find spittle bugs. What do I look for? Well, I look for what looks like a gob of sticky spit on the plant. And that's how it gets its name, spill bug. So let's take a look at the trees. I'm gonna flip my camera around so you can see this. Hang on and we'll look at spittle bugs. Right here in your backyard. You never know what you're going to find. And here's to make this invasive. It's exotic. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes of terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's... These are white pine trees with the five needles in the bundle. This is a Virginia pine tree. And if we walk up to this tree and take a look, look at this. Look at what we find here. It looks like gobs of white spit in the branches. Now this is how you find the spittle bugs. And there's one right here. Let's take a look at this one. And you can see that it's foamy looking. And if I touch it with my fingers, it's uh, distinctly sticky and what we would call in biology mucilaginous. And here's another one. So most of these today are appearing on my Virginia pine tree that's sitting here. But when I walked over to the white pines, I was able to find them here too. So these ones look like they're just getting started. So the question becomes, what makes this spittle? Why is it there? And how can we find it? Well, I'm gonna grab a pair of clippers and snip off one of these branches and we're gonna take a closer look. So here I am at the Nature in Your Backyard Science Education Center. And you can see 
uh, my very sophisticated equipment here. I love having my terrarium that has a tight fitting top but is very very well aerated for temporary keeping bugs. I usually walk around with one of these just in case I find something cool. I got my magnifying glass. I got a couple different bug boxes. I really like these ones. These have been I think my best ones. And here I have a pine tree branch that I cut off with my pair of clippers. And there is the spittle. So we're going to go in and investigate this and see if we can find what is making this spittle. So I peeled off a few of these branches and I'm going to use this wooden stick to remove some of this white spittle. And you can see it's, it's really sticky. It's hard to get off, isn't it? I think I'll use my fingers and show you how uh, sticky that is. Look, see how sticky that is? You can see it's just you know, pulling and hanging on. So let's look and see if we can find what is inside here. And there he is. He's trying to sneak away and slip past me undetected. Let me see if we can get him out where we can see him better. And here he is, taking a walk up my hand. And to me, he always looks like a little dinosaur walking around. This guy is pretty close to being an adult. You, if you look carefully, you can see some not so well developed wing pads and his abdomen is still segmented. So that means his wings haven't developed past that. These guys will live in that spittle for several weeks and molt probably about five times. Remember insects are arthropods. Arthropods have an exoskeleton and they have to molt in order to grow. They're definitely interesting little guys. Here he is walking up the little stick I had I used to find him. And there's our spittle bug. He's a true bug because he has a beak that he used to stab plant stems and he sucks juices out of the plant. Now, how does he make that spittle? Well, let me explain. So let's talk about how and why the spittle bug makes this spit. So the spittle bug, it's in the hemipteran group, and hemipterans have a beak that they use to stab, in this case, plants, and suck the juices out. These insects also breathe through spiracles. So insects don't breathe through their mouth like we do with internal lungs. They have holes down the sides of their abdomen that allow air into tracheal tubes inside the organism's body. And oxygen goes in, air goes in containing oxygen, and oxygen diffuses into the insect's body. Okay, so you need to keep those things in mind. So when the spittle bug attaches to a plant, he attaches upside down and puts his beak into the stem and starts sucking out juices. What does he want from the juices? Well, the plant juices, for one, will contain sugar. And the sugar is his energy source and provides energy for movement and growth. But he also needs proteins. And proteins in sap are in a much lower concentration than the sugars. And we know sap contains uh, uh, sugars, plant sap, because we can actually take the sap from maple trees and boil it down and make maple syrup. Plants do photosynthesis, make sugars, and those sugars are in their plant sap. So the spittle bug, attached to the plant stem with his beak in the plant, is upside down. And as he takes in this sap and he's extracting from the sap or the plant juices, sugars and proteins, 
he excretes many, many more times more than his weight. And excretes 250 times his weight in plant juices out of the pointed tip of his abdomen, and it flows down both his sides. So picturing this, he's uh, attached to this plant. He's excreting plant juices from the opening at the tip of his digestive tract, and he's excreting it on himself. Well, how does the insect breathe? Through spiracles. So he's actually blowing bubbles into this excrement that's flowing down his body. And as he releases that excrement, he also releases some mucilaginous substances. Mucilaginous means thick and sticky. And so he releases these mucilaginous substances in this excrement that's flowing upside down over his body, and then he's blowing bubbles through it, through holes in his sides, which are the spiracles that open into the trachea. So spittle bugs sit upside down on the plant stem, excrete over themselves, and blow bubbles through their excrement. So why do they do that? It provides protection from sunlight and UV rays because they're out in the sun on a plant stem where leaves are exposed to sunlight, so it protects them there. It also protects them from predators because what animal wants to go in there and probe into that sticky mucilaginous stuff? And, then, and it can, imagine if you're like a praying mantis with your kind of mechanical jaws and paws and you get that stuff all over. And you can see insects contacting this that, you know, will, will try to clean themselves and get themselves off, get that stuff off them right away. So it provides a protection for this organism to grow. It will go from an egg and hatch into nymphs, which is the form of larva that they have. They'll molt uh, four or five times within that spittily layer and emerge as winged adult frog hoppers, which you can find hopping around in the grass and lawn later in the summer. So this is the time to go see them. Thank you for watching another episode of Nature in Their Backyard. I don't know if you can hear my backdrop, but I can hear cicadas in the background. And this is the loudest that they've been yet. And we'll come back and we'll, we'll talk about cicadas as well. So today we talked about spittle bugs, also called frog hoppers. They're a kind of insect. They feed on plant stems by piercing the stem with their beak, sucking out plant juices. The plant juices contain a good percentage of sugar, very low percentage of protein. So these insects have to extract a lot of fluid to get the sugar and the proteins they need for growth. They will molt four to five times in that spittle. The spittle is there to protect them from sunlight and from predators and just make them hard to find. And predators are deterred by the sticky froth, but it makes it easy for us to find. When they make their final chain to the adult, the adults leave the spittle. They have wings. We call them frog hoppers because they can hop. They look very similar to leaf hoppers. And there is a way to distinguish the two of them by looking at the spines on their legs. But I'll leave that for you to look up and Google. Because remember, I want you to do two things. One, I want you to go outside and find things on your own and experience the outdoors. But I also want you to fact check. I want you to research. I want you to see what other people have written or have to say about organisms that we cover, like spittlebugs. Thank you for watching Nature in Your Backyard. We'll catch you on the next episode.